Now that I got the major modifications done to my uh, whitetail head form, my pedestal head form for my deer, uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to mold his antlers. And the big reason I'm doing this is something a friend of mine asked me about. He asked me, John, why are you mounting your deer just as, as just a head mount? Why aren't you mounting the whole deer? And my excuse was, well, my reason is, well, I really don't have any room for the whole mount. He's like, yeah, man, but it's the only deer you have a shot, probably the only deer you're ever going to kill. You should do a, a full mount. And I had already invested into the um, the floor pedestal. I mean, I bought, I've, I've bought the pedestal and all the habitat to go with it, the form and all that. Then I thought, hey, I know how to make molds and make castings. Why don't I just make a mold of my deer's antlers, have extra sets around. Then, if I get hold of a full-size skin, I can buy the, the, the life-size mannequin I want and eventually mount my deer as a... We're here today to mold my deer's antlers. Here are the basic components for mold making for the deer's antlers. And what we have here is a good calibrated scale, which I did pick this one up from Harbor Freight. So, and it, it, it's been working real well for me for weighing out, uh, precisely weighing out uh, the two halves of silicone uh, rubber. What we have here is Platsil FS20. Now, FS stands for fast set. In a temperature of about 72 to 74 degrees, it'll set up in about... Oh, I don't know, like, has a five-minute pot life and working time. Uh, but down here, it's about 65 degrees in my basement shop. I should I should get a little more a little more time out of it. Uh, this is the tin fix thickening agent, and this is what's used to turn this from a thick liquid into a thicker uh, silicone that will be applied to the antlers using brushes and popsicle sticks. And what have you. Now this is available through the Brick in the Yard mold supply. They're in uh, Texas. Uh, the product in, its, in and of itself is Polytech uh, silicone. It's very, very good stuff. This is very, very good stuff. I used, I've used it for other projects and I decided to utilize it here. Mixing vessels. I'm going with these clear plastic mixing cups, which we got. I got a ton of them from Sam's Club. They last a good long time. Here are the uh, directions for using the Platsil FS20. Uh, as you can see, it has a uh, pot life of approximately eight minutes and a demold of 25 minutes. Like I say down here, I should be able to get eight to ten minute working time on it. And I should be able to demold it within, I don't know, 30 minutes to a to an hour, I would say. But um, these, this is the instructions for using this product. Using any platinum cure silicone, even tin cure silicone, one must be aware that uh, there are things that can inhibit the curing of the silicones, most especially platinum. They're very, very sensitive uh, atmospheric uh, cure silicones. The big thing you need to be aware of using this silicone, any platinum-based silicone, is to use a sulfur-free clay as your uh, clay wall, as your mold wall, or in building up anything about uh, the subject to be molded, or even the subject it itself should be sculpted in a sulfur-free clay. With that said, uh, Brick in the Yard sells this Poly's 2500 aerosol release agent. It's very good. I've used it on uh, I've used it on molds in the past uh, to, as a separator. In this case, however, with the deer antlers, I'm going with a product just simply known as MR15. 
This product uh, I purchased from Silicones Inc. several years ago. I don't know if it's still produced. You have to call them and ask specifically for MR15. Okay, uh, this is what I'm going to be putting a light coating of on my deer's antlers. Um, it's easy enough to wash off something like deer antlers with uh, warm water and, and soap and uh, scrub it with a sponge. But this is the product I'm going to use and I'm going to apply it with what's known as a disposable brush. But as you can see by the condition of this brush, I use it quite frequently. So let's begin to begin. First thing I'm going to do is make sure the separator is well distributed in its matrix. And this basically smells to me like white paraffin wax dissolved in turpentine. With that being said, I'm going to start applying this to the antlers and the skull plate and the surrounding wood. Very light coat, doesn't does not need to be heavy. Okay, this is a good product, covers well. The clay that's sealing the top of these antlers where they screwed into the wood support is a non-sulfur clay. It is protolina, also available from Brick in the Yard Supply. It is a substitution clay for another clay that used to be made available it's a substitute for what's known as clean clay and I, I believe this is no longer produced by the company but it has been picked up by another company who now produces it as protolina now you want to be sure to get all around all around the antlers and at one point, at some point I should say, I'm going to pick this up off the mounting stand so I can get the underside of the antlers covered with the separator. Now I don't think I'll need to do this for the silicone because the silicone is thick enough and you can really see where it's being applied. I may lift this off the mounting stand for the simple reason of being able to make sure that my mold is complete especially down here along the burrs where it's closest to the board but I'm going to continue with this process then it has to be put aside to dry now on my little buck he's got this odd hollow in his antlers and I want to be sure that I get the separator down deep into this little cavity. What caused this? I have no idea. It could be genetics. could be an injury. It's hard to say. But my point is, wherever you've got any kind of distortion in your antlers, you need to make sure the separator goes in. And in here... The bone appears to be very porous, okay? So you really want to make sure there's no way the silicone can adhere to any part of the antlers anywhere. With the entire set of antlers covered, skull plate, front of the skull plate, and the base, I use a little flashlight to check to make sure there's a reflective quality everywhere, meaning that the set of antlers is thoroughly covered. It's here on the base as well. I want this to be able to be removed very, very easily. Also, you want to make sure nothing is sticking. There are no hairs from the brush or particles of dust that are on the antlers. Whatever is on the antlers needs to be removed now. Otherwise, it will become part of the mold. And you don't want that. You want a clean, crisp mold. Now... This mold will be brushed on the antlers in one piece, will be removed by making an incision along the main beam on each side of the antlers, 
and possibly up a couple of the tips. I haven't decided yet yet. If this slips off the tips easily after the main cut is made, that will be the only cut that will be made and the the support shell will be all that's needed to hold it all together. And so far it looks good. I'm going to let this dry for about an hour or two. I'll come back in about an hour and check it and we will begin the molding process. Okay, the Platsil fast setting silicone is a one-to-one -one mix, low viscosity, um, and it is best if gloves are worn, and if you need to wear gloves working with silicone, avoid latex gloves. Your nitro gloves are going to be your best bet. Again, I got these at Harbor Freight. You could get them from anyone who carries them. I'm going to mix out equal portions of this product. And I've got, I'm going to make 65. Okay. All right, 66. 67. Okay. <laughs> and that's the part B. Now to add the part A. All right. It's got to come out to... 132 went back down to 66 so 132 there we go. we're getting close one thirty two. Now we're going to mix this up and add a small amount of the tin fix. It's 132 grams. Shut off the scale. I'm going to mix this up thoroughly. You want to scrape the sides of the container as well as the bottom. You want to go back and forth, figure eight pattern with mixing. All right, now the tin fix. I'm going to add just a few drops of tin fix. Putting four drops of tin fix in. I'm going to mix this up, and this will turn the thin silicone to a thicker silicone turn it to a gel which is what I want I want a thicker gel for application okay here we go on to the antlers I'm going to begin by applying it to the antlers, like so. Make sure it gets around the base, around the antler burrs. Put this in place. Like so. I want to get underneath, all the way around. Like so. Okay. Now we're going to start applying it to the body of the antlers. Like so. I'm going to continue doing this all up the antlers.
There is some speculation that he might move as much as possible to avoid those five four splits because he understands that a Thomas Kavanaugh court is highly problematic, especially with the ruling on issues of reproductive rights and other women's rights. Try not to waste this. This is not this is not inexpensive stuff. So I want to be careful not to waste any. I'm going to pull this off the base now, and I'm going to apply it underneath the antlers. All right. I'm going to continue applying this off camera. There's no need to keep the camera rolling. I've gone to using a chip brush for application. I've put it down into the little cavity at the tip of the end of the antler beam. And I'm it's getting thicker as we go along here. I'm going to continue to apply this. I'm going to get all around the base of the antlers. The second coating will be made even thicker than the first. I just want to make sure it's complete and all around. The main thing is to get this first application everywhere. It all connects now here and there, but it's really covering very, very well. Now I'm going to use the remainder in here on the skull plate. See how it's thickening up as we go along. Start going up the other side of the other antler. I'm going to coat as much of it as I can with a brush. I'm going to get it coated. Doesn't matter if it's if it's built up thick. I want it to be coated. I get that brush hair off of there. Don't want that on there. All right. Keep going. I'm gonna get it on the underside as well. I'm going to use the popsicle stick, or the craft stick, I should say. It's a big old craft stick to apply this. Make sure it gets to the underside of the antlers. Okay, it's really beginning to cure. It's really beginning to kick. But that's okay. I'm working it. Just keep working it. Working it and working it and working it. And this is why you want to wear gloves. This is mighty slimy stuff. going to keep spreading it. I want to get it all around the rack. I'm going to get it on all parts of the antlers. I just want to keep spreading it on the surface. Once the surface is covered I can come back 
and I can build up thickness. Right now I want coverage. I want to get the hairs out of the silicone. I want coverage. More than anything else, I want even coverage. Complete coverage of the antlers. As I come back later and build up my thickness. Can't emphasize it enough, the main thing is to get it covered. Covered first, built up additionally as we go. We'll make sure there's no trapped air. Anywhere on the antlers. So I'm going to keep working it. It'll reach a point where it will no longer spread. That's when you have to stop. Or you can end up peeling it away, and you don't you don't want to peel it away. We've got a nice coating all the way around. We grab this stick again and add a little thickness down here. I want to make sure I get plenty of silicone along the bottom. See, it's beginning to peel away. It's beginning to set. So I don't want to mess with it too much longer. All right. Okay. And we've got here, we've got the antlers pretty well coated by now. Very well coated, in fact. Oh, drop a stick. <laughs> the silicone is pretty slick. Pretty slick stuff. Do not use, reuse a stick once it's been dropped. Now, as this is setting, I'm going to mix up another batch. The second coat of applied silicone. to the right antler side. It's gotten thick. I'll probably go with a third coat as well. Right now, I'm going to apply a second coat to the left side of the antler. Okay, each side now has got three coats of the silicone on here. It's really, really super gelled up. And I'm just waiting for it to set. Uh, I think after this sets or gets close to setting, I'll put maybe another coat on here. We'll see. I'm not sure. I did put big lumps of it over the tips of the antlers because they're very thin. There are, there are areas along the antlers, along the tines, that look a little thin. I may, I may add a little, a little more of the paste on there. Um, I definitely need to add around the base of the antlers here. This needs to be built out like so. Uh, I think I have enough for like one more layer. But then if I need any more, I may have to go ahead and order some more and I'll do that over the weekend I don't know like I said I'm, I'm really not sure I'll, I'll see how this sets what I've got here is an alcohol and dawn detergent mix that I used for smoothing my caulking my silicone caulking uh, molds so I'm gonna I'm gonna it seems to be letting me slide over the surface now that the hole over here is really really well filled in but this does seem to be letting me slide over the surface and smooth things as I go wherever I added uh, the fresher silicone it's, it's allowing it to spread without sticking to the stick and without grip, grabbing to the stick it's also getting rid of the little you know, curly ends of the silicone that are like forming like hairs or anything like that. So it's it's allowing me to get a nice smooth finish. 
And that's not real, always a big deal, but it, it can be in that you don't want anything to catch up or, or grab hold of the support jacket that's made. That will be made with Bondo glass. I did that on a set of wildebeest horns I made. Uh, and it, it supported beautifully. Of course, that was done with a tin cure silicone. It did not hold up over the years. This, if applied properly, should hold up extraordinarily well. Even if I get one or two castings out of it, I'll be a very happy man. But I'm sure I can get more. I just, I need to even this all off. It's real gooey now and gummy. I may wait until this coat really sets up before I go ahead and add an additional coat. Right now I'm just, I'm trying to smooth what's here. And it's really, it's setting up rather well, very well, in fact. It's setting up. So I know my, my, my weight mixture has been correct. Or I should say my weight measurement of the mixture has been correct. And it's just a matter of letting it set now. Like so. And it's, it's doing really well. I'm... I'm most impressed with this product. I was going to make the mold actually out of uh, silicone caulking. However, the formulation for that seems to have been changed. When I put the silicone into water, it no longer floats. It used to float. It no longer floats. So they did. They they screwed it up somehow. They screwed up the recipe, the formula. It sinks to the bottom, and that's not real. Uh, not real a, a real pleasant thing to see, especially with something like my, my deer's antlers. I mean, the antlers will never be, they'll, they'll not be ruined by this. Um, you know, you can't really ruin the bone, especially it's had a uh, separator applied. And the silicone will not be a permanent uh, addition to the bone, no matter what. This will come off. Not really spreading it anymore. I'm simply trying to model it down, and that's that's working. That seems to be working very well. Yep, I'm going to give another coat. Certain areas where it looks a little thin, where I can see through it a little too much, and where it's a little there are little cavities formed in between. I'm going to give it another coat of silicone. But for now, I'm going to let this set for a little while and come back to it. And here we have it. Nice thick layer of silicone rubber. I went over my Platsil 20 with some Platsil 10. It's a little, it's a little more flexible, and it has a little longer setting time. And I used the Platsil 10 to even off any oh grooves that appeared, for want of a better term any grooves that appeared in the silicone. I also used it to complete around the base of the skull plate here, down at the bottom. It's been filled in very, very well under the brow tines. Um, I'd say we have a, a complete... Uh, I'm not going to bother to demold it until tomorrow. It's uh, 9.04 in the evening now. I think it's time I call it a day. So. The reveal comes tomorrow. Good night. Good night. They gone? Good, that ought to hold little bastards.